Hello, welcome to Nurse Session in Heart America TV. A lot of growers are shy to admit that they don't fully understand calculation when mixing nutrients. But no worries, today we will start learning from scratch how to make calculations and get sure our plant is getting the proper nutrition. In order to do this, we first need to learn how to understand fertilizer labels. When we buy fertilizers, mixed or compounds, we always get a label showing a percentage. But how can we relate that percentage to the total PPM that we're delivering to our plants with our fertilizer? First, when trying to maintain good nutrition, we should always have in hand a target of PPM for each nutrient for a specific crop. For this, you can check published articles or university's webpage to get reliable information. And of course, you can also download our fertilizer guide, which you can find in our webpage. Anyways, once you have this information, you will want to make sure the fertilizer mix or components used are delivering the correct nutrition. So you should always ask yourself, are you just following a recipe from a fertilizer mix or are you sure your plant is getting the correct nutrition? I'm not saying that a fertilizer mix will provide a wrong formula, but it's always better to confirm which is your total PPM for each nutrient when mixing fertilizers. In addition, there are aspects like water source, for example, which, which can change the results in your nutrition. So there are a lot of aspects to consider when mixing fertilizers rather than just following a recipe. This is why you should always consider the water source, the fertilizer content, plus any complementary compound that is recommended by the fertilizer to calculate the final PPM. So how can we start? First, in working with a fertilizer mix, you need to read the directions. Most fertilizers include the use of a fertilizer mix and some additives like calcium nitrate and potassium sulfate. This is to complete the nutrition and is actually good because gives us more chance to modify elements if necessary. For example, if the water source is not good. Well, first, you need to check the instructions and find the label where you will find the percentage for each element. Now we are going to calculate using the percentage and the fertilizer's instruction, the total PPM for each element with the purpose to compare with the recommended levels that we found in a reliable source. So here is an example. First, you will read the fertilizer instruction and if necessary to make the conversion to milligrams per liter, you will have to do it. Most of the fertilizers can be instructions in grams per liter or grams per gallon. So make sure to make the proper conversion before the starting because PPM is equal to milligrams per liter. So we need to work with this unit. Now, to get the total PPM provided by the fertilizer mix, we will need to calculate the percentage showed in the label. For example, for nitrogen in this label from the fertilizer of Horta Americas, we have 9% of nitrogen. Then we will calculate the 9% of the quantity that is shown in destruction. For the fertilizer of Horta Americas, the the recommendation is to use 544 milligrams per liter. So this is already in milligrams per liter. So I made the conversion before starting with the calculations. So here we multiply, we calculate a 9% and we find the total PPM for nitrogen that is provided by the Hort Americas fertilizer. So now the hardest part. Some fertilizers can include compounds in the label, and we cannot use the percentage of a compound to calculate a specific element. So for this one, we will have to calculate the quantity of the nutrient of interest. For example, in here we have a compound and we are interested in a particular element. To get 
the amount of a particular M element, we need to divide the molecular weight of the element by the molecular weight of the compound. And the result will be multiplied by the number shown in the label. Be careful in here, we are not calculating percentage. We are multiplying directly by the number in the label. The result in this case three will be the new percentage that we will use to make our calculation just like in the previous slide. After doing this, you will get the final PPM for your formula. Remember to consider also any complementary compound recommended by the fertilizer mix. Each complementary compound will have its own label. Now you can check if you are delivering the correct amount of nutrients. But be careful. In this section must be crucial also to add the PPM added by your water source. For this, you will have to send your water source for analysis. This is a very ba basic step that you don't want to miss. Water source can be high in some salt that can totally affect your nutrition. Once you add your water source, then you will have the real total PPM. And now will be the time to compare with the recommendations of nutrition for a particular crop. If levels are not within the range, check which element needs to be modified and change the dose based on percentage of the fertilizer mix or compounds. For example, if calcium is too high, you can change calcium nitrate dose recommended by the fertilizer to keep your nutrition balance. Fertilizer management is not as complex as we think. However, it's always important to learn how to play with the numbers to check our nutrition and balance all the elements when necessary. I hope you enjoy this session. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia. I am Hort America's Technical Service. Please subscribe if you like this video, leave comments and questions, and provide recommendations for other topics that you would like to learn in this channel. See you on the next one.